at Pokemon Blue. Last episode, we defeated Koga at the Fuchsia City Gym, got the right to use Surf, and even explored around a little bit to pick up some items we missed. This episode, we're going to progress on. We're going to figure out how to get through those gates that we couldn't get through outside the cities of Celadon, Lavender, Vermilion, and Cerulean. To do so, we need to return to the Pokemon department store and go up to the top floor and buy a drink. Any drink will do. Uh, so I'm going to be cheap and get water. Because you figure those guards were all complaining about being super thirsty. So there we go. One thing, when I first played this game, a lot of people always got stuck, like they couldn't figure out how to leave Viridian Forest, couldn't figure out how to leave their house in Pallet Town, all sorts of weird things like that. I managed to get through most of them okay. Viridian Forest stumped me for a little bit, no pun intended with the trees, but it was this puzzle right here on how to get into Saffron City that really got me. Also, there's one more area we can use Surf to get an item that I forgot about. Right here. We've seen this old man a couple times, and he's stuck here by a pond. Hello there. I've seen you, but I never had a chance to talk. Here's a gift for dropping by. Team 41. It's soft boiled. Only one Pokemon can use it, and that's Chansey. Yep, it's a big old waste of a TM slot. Not only does Chansey learn soft boil by level up anyways, but... If you erase it off your Chansey, you've got problems anyways. Because that's the only reason you would want to use the TM for Soft Boiled. Is, oh, Chansey learned it, and I passed up on it. But you could just go catch another Chansey. So, you know, useless TM. Could have been used by any other useful move. So now let's go in here. Whoa, boy, I'm parched. Huh? I can have this drink? Thanks! Well, well. Oh, if you want to go to Saffron, you can go through. I'll share this with the other guards. So yeah, this one guard is going to share four bottles of water with three other guys. Not only that, but they were blocking an entire city just and they let me through because they're thirsty? That's a little shady. Sylph's latest product, or at least to be determined. Not even going to tell us what it is? New Great Ball offers improved capture rates. Try it on those hard to catch Pokemon. Something tells me you're actually supposed to come here before you go to Fuchsia. Because they're advertising all these mid grade products that we don't really have access to anymore. It'd be great if the Elite Four came and stomped Team Rocket. Pokemon growth rates differ from species to species. Silphco is famous, that's why it attracted Team Rocket. Yeah, these guys are talking about something that's happened in the town. There we are, there's Team Rocket Grunts running around. With Sylph under our control, we can exploit Pokemon around the world. That's right, Sylphco, we've heard about it a couple times. It's a company that runs pretty much all of Kanto's technological advancements. Mr. Psychic's house. And they're talking like it's been taken over. That can't be good. Mm, wait, don't say a word. You wanted this! TM29! Don't waste it, TM29 is Psychic. The most powerful Psychic move in the game, and it's definitely worth teaching to somebody. Most Psychic types learn it by level up, so don't waste it on them. But definitely any other Pokemon can learn it. A lot of normal types like Snorlax and Wigglytuff can learn it. So, you know, keep it in mind for them to counter their fighting weaknesses. You watch where you're walking, jerk. Pokemart's over here, seems kind of redundant when they have the giant Sylphco building. Buy revives here too. And you can also buy max repels. But, like I said earlier, step for step, super repels are the better deal. So we'll just keep continuing exploring around town. The Saffron City Pokemon Gym. Leader Sabrina. The master of psychic Pokemon. Are you challenging the gym, Mr. Rocket Man? Get out of the way! Okay. Fighting Dojo. Yeah, this town actually has two gyms. One of them's unofficial, and if I remember right, the lore is apparently they wanted to have a fighting gym, but then the psychic gym came and beat them and took the rights to be the gym. So they're still functioning here as a dojo, and it's a nice little puzzle. Well, not much of a puzzle, you walk straight on through, but it is full of a new trainer class. 
the Black Belt. A series staple, specializes in fighting types. They're your typical brain, brawn over brains type of person. They'll use powerful moves and powerful Pokemon to boot. But right now I think it's all going to be Machops and Mankeys in their respective evolutions. In fact, I think this is a good spot to see the evolved forms of them if you haven't seen them yet. I believe there should be a Machoke and a Primeape in here somewhere. And we missed. Yeah, I guess that is true. Fly does have like 90, 90 accuracy, so there's a very good chance you could miss. Happens more than it should if you ask me. But this is a really great spot if you're flying or psychic types are getting a little bit far behind. Come here and just let them go to town, wreck house, and get a whole bunch of experience out of it. Like Primate, for example, has a little bit lower defense. So your flying types, if you know fly, should be able to outspeed it and knock it out in one hit. Oof, I give up. The prime fighters across the land train here. There's only five of you? I hear you're good. Show me. It's nice is you could fight him first if you go around back of the other guy. So like, who told you I'm good then? So this is our, actually the first time we've seen him a choke now that I think about it. Look at him there, giving us that nice seductive wink and flexing that bicep. So there's another page added to our Pokedex. And an even thousand experience, too. Judge! One point! I think that's a karate term for, you know, judging how strikes and stuff are handled. Oh, Master's a pro fighter. Do I fight him instead of his Pokemon? Nothing tough frightens me. I break boulders for training. And that's supposed to intimidate you? I'm not gonna send any of my rock types out against you. Can't fool me. Stubbed fingers, yeah. The only thing that frightens us is psychic power! Yeah, this one doesn't get translated improperly like the ghost types and psychic types. They definitely wreck fighting types. And if you think, oh, I can just teach psychic to my Snorlax or Wigglytuff then and go in and clean house, think again. They will... It's not even pretty, they'll trash them. Trash them hard. Low kick, karate chop, submission. Even a Snorlax doesn't want to take all that damage. I give up. You wait till you see our master. I'm a small fry compared to him. Really? <laughs> I am the karate master. I am the leader here. You wish to challenge us? Expect no mercy. <laughs> so our pseudo gym leader. Black belt doesn't even get a name. However, he's using two new fighting type Pokemon. First up is the Kicking Fiend Hitmonlee. Not gonna go into too much detail over him. But just know you want to hit him hard and fast and try and use immunity turns if possible. And then he also has Hitmonchan, the Knockout Boxer. It's got a little bit more, well actually I think it's slower, but it's a little bit bulkier because, you know, counter punches and all that. Same thing as before though, use an immunity turn and then hit it the next. See, it actually took that. It's packing Comet Punch just like Kangaskhan would be. Thankfully, we can take it. 
I almost was going to mirror move that, but I'm like, eh, Comet Punch's accuracy can be kind of shaky. Oh, heart beaten. Indeed, I have lost, but I beseech you, do not take our emblem as your trophy. In return, I will give you a prized fighting Pokemon. Choose whichever one you like. I'd love to, but I can't get to it. I seem to have trapped myself. So while I exit the building and come right back in, I'll go over the bios of the two Pokemon we can get from him. So there's the powerful Hitmonlee. Really high attack, good speed. Not too bulky, though. It has several signature moves. It's got Rolling Kick, Jump Kick, and High Jump Kick. Very powerful moves. High Jump Kick and... Ro uh, not Rolling Kick. Uh, jump Kick do recoil damage to you if you miss those, so you gotta be careful not to attack on a turn somebody's using Fly. Though it's a really powerful... I've already said that, but I just can't get over it. Later games get it even better with an ability it picks up. It does also have the move Meditate, so it can slowly raise its attack set up a little bit. Definitely worth picking up. Its counterpart's a little bit worse off in the form of Hitmonchan. It's a little bit got slower, a little bit less power, and a little bit more utility, and that's all it's got over Hitmonlee. Hitmonchan does pick up th all three of the elemental punches, Thunder, Fire, and Ice. Downfall is those moves go off the special stat, which Hitmonchan doesn't have that much of. In fact, hardly any fighting types do. But, you know, if you want to have a cool little nifty gimmick move, that's your guy. It does get countered by level up, so you don't have to use the TM for it. But other than that, you're going to be stuck using Submission as your main fighting move. So I really don't recommend going for it. So yeah, either or is definitely a really solid choice. I think Hitman Lee is probably the better of the two. Mainly because the elemental punches, as cool as they are, go off of the special stat. And the special stat's kind of not good on Hitman Chien. And him on the other side good either. So we'll leave him behind. We'll find a way to get you. Thankfully the Karate King gave us data on it already, so... Yeah. Shining Golden Land of Commerce. Should be... Oh, nope, we can't go in. What do you want? Get lost. You're even blocking the civilians, man. Saffron belongs to Team Rocket. Well, that's just not nice. Not nice at all. Being evil makes me feel so alive. Silco office building. Now, there would be a rocket grunt blocking here. And, oh. Okay, you guys saw that, right? He wasn't there, and then he spawned in when I walked there. Because I'm like, normally he's one tile over after you've cleared a couple events. And... It's taking a snooze, so yeah. The one guy that's in charge of guarding the door, keeping us from going in there, disrupting their operations, decided to take a quick little siesta. However, we're not going to go into self-code just yet. I want to do a little bit of off-screen training. I know it's kind of a short episode, but I figure there's not much more we can do before we come here, because we don't want to go to the southern island town. So we'll cut off here for the day. See you guys next episode. Stay beautiful, and come on back.